Bubbles have had a bad press for two different reasons. The first is, most of the time, the speculation that constitutes a bubble focuses on assets, on financing projects that create no economic value. Whether it's tulip bulbs 350 years ago in Holland, or whether it's tract houses in the Nevada desert, or third homes, third beach homes on the coast of Spain, the value generated by the speculative excess in economic terms is minimal. And on the other hand, of course, bubbles burst. And when they burst, they not only leave those projects stranded, but they take money out of the pockets of the greater fools who are following the bubble. But, but, every now and again, bubbles are not only tolerable, they are necessary. Because occasionally, the object of speculation is one of those fundamental transformational technologies from the canals and the railroads of 200 years ago through the internet of the last decades, which, once they're deployed at scale, change everything. They create a new economy. And if the bubble particularly is limited to the stock market, to the equity market, and doesn't infect the banking system, so that when it bursts, it's only the speculative, the speculative investors who lose money and the banking system isn't frozen, then bubbles are not only worthwhile, they are in fact necessary and tolerating them is fundamental to the process of innovation and to the dynamics of the innovation economy. Well, the austerity movement is threatening the wellspring of innovation, of economic innovation driven by technological process, progress. It's still the case in the United Kingdom that the coalition government has said it will protect research funding. But the research funding takes place in a larger ecosystem, a larger ecology where high employment, high growth drive the incentives for taking new science and new technology and turning it into commercial ventures, commercially promising ventures which have an economic impact. In the U.S., we're facing a standoff almost regardless of what happens in the general election and the national election in November between Congress and the president with significant elements of Congress determined to reduce, if not eliminate, the role of the state in the economy. This would be tragic. It is the long-term investment in fundamental science and transformation into technologically useful invention that ultimately drives productivity and living standards throughout the modern economy.